Welcome to the Meyer Clinics podcast, and you just heard a quote from one of your hosts, Dr. Lisa Day. Join our licensed clinical professionals from various backgrounds as they discuss fascinating mental health topics with a wide range of guests. Meyer Clinics is a Christian counseling organization with multiple clinics nationwide dedicated to treating the whole person emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Welcome to our listening family. We thank you for joining us. Hello, Dr. Paul Meyer. Hello, Paul. We are going to finish up yeah. our, our show and uh, I won't, yeah. not that it would be a problem for me to cry. I'm not going to cry this time. Yay. Um, we're going yeah. to <laughs> talk I'm glad you did last time. Ah, yeah. I'm glad I, you did. I, I, yeah, it was right before the show that we were doing now. So it was raw, raw. It was a raw nerve sitting in this chair. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and, and I, and I, I, I hope we do a podcast when I'm able to, when I'm going through something so I can cry too, because I, I, I like being uh, real honest. I did, as you know, I did live radio for uh, 25 years. I don't know if people have ever seen the the TV show, Frasier, you know, about a psychiatrist that does a yep. live TV show, a, com- a comedy show. I've, I've watched a lot of those uh, old uh, TV shows and, and uh, I was doing that, uh, a Christian version of that though, <laughs> but I was doing that for five years before they ever had the show. And, and, uh, my, uh, the, I was doing it, uh, live, uh, part of those years was right from Newport beach. And I, and I went to, um, it, it went to 2 million people a day, 400 stations. And, Amazing. and so, uh, and I know of people in Hollywood that were uh, listening to it too. And would, it would write me or things like that. And, uh, so I, I don't know if I was an inspiration for them to do a secular version of a Christian <laughs> talk show or not, but awesome. but anyway, it, it was a lot of fun. I, and and we, it was live, and so there were times I'd you know share sadness or struggles or things when I was going through them on the air, and I, I think they were you know it made people feel like like we had a relationship rather than just a lecture or something. Yeah, it's it's and interesting. Pretty pretty cool calls, you know. Pretty yeah. funny calls sometimes. And it's interesting too, because I noticed with the way things are now with social media, um, everyone has, is very kind to our podcasters for the most part across the network, very kind, realizing that a lot of them are sharing their own personal stories um, and they're yeah. kind on places like Facebook or Twitter or wherever. But one place where people just are not kind, um, mo- for the most part they are, but where you get your nastiest comments is always youtube i wish that wasn't true is, but is what did it again when what when these shows go to air on youtube is when we get the really just hurtful um nasty comments that's the one place in the social media universe where people just tend to be oh, pretty awful where they try to some people pick you apart oh absolutely to the guest me um, you know, other podcasters on the network, just, just that is the one place where they'll just flail about in the most horrifying way possible. Um, you know, and, and I'll, I, I asked a friend of mine who has, I don't know, hundred thousand something subscribers. And she said, Oh yeah. Um, I have such rhino skin at this point. I have been called the most horrific things and I just delete the <laughs> Like wow, you got some thick skin, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know why I'm laughing is I'm uh, we're doing I'm I'm sitting in my office right now while we're doing our podcast, you know, and uh, and uh, right in front of me, I've got a bookshelf full of rhinos and <laughs> rhinoceros <laughs> and elephants. Oh, actual <laughs> like what are they? Little figurines? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at. I'm looking at actual elephants. I mean, a lot of them, so elephants funny. and rhinoceros. Even on the top shelf, I've got an elephant looking at a rhinoceros, and then I've got an American eagle on it, where I won an award, you know, for oh outstanding my American. Thing. But anyway, uh, um, and and the reason is, I if I were an animal, um, I'd probably be a rhinoceros or an elephant, and in, in, uh because they have thick skin and they and the uh, rhino has a horn at the end and protect themselves and but they but but at the same time they're like the elephant I like the elephant especially 
um, yeah. because the elephant's also a very loving, oh. uh, loyal, you know, a rhino, I mean, uh, an elephant will be loyal to one mate for life. And when the mate dies, they even go back uh, and visit the bones uh, for where yep. their mate is and where their mate died. And uh, so they have an anniversary, you know, once, you know, once a year, you know, they make a trek and, and, uh, and do a remembrance and stuff. And, and uh, so anniversary illnesses is what we're talking about. And, and I'm glad you mentioned the thick skin. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having thick skin. Uh, I, I, you know what? I, I don't even know. I know, I'm, I know there must be a lot of criticisms that I've gotten over the years for all the podcasts and stuff like that. But I never read them. So I, I don't, I know there are some, I know there's a lot of them probably, but I don't, I never read them. So, cause I'm, I'm too sensitive. I get my feelings oh. hurt too easy. So I, I yeah. don't bother reading them. I just do it the best. I, now, and I don't do the best I can remember. You only do the best once in your life, but I try to do a decent job. And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, if people don't like it, then I feel, you know, I mean, if there's ever constructive criticism, then, then my other staff will say, Oh, you know, here was a good, a good, right constructive criticism they'll share it with me and i'll say okay i learned i don't bother reading the, the nasty criticism. stuff yeah i i don't yeah. you, i get an email from youtube with every comment which i haven't figured out i can't send it to someone on the team because they are everybody that works with this organization is so passionate about it that they get angry that secondhand anger yeah. for, and it makes their lives miserable so i well not their yeah. lives that's being dramatic but you know it makes yeah. them upset so i'll get them and i get a hint of this is going to be negative and i'm like oh there's a comment to delete because if it's yeah. nasty there's i don't yeah want yeah that yeah out there not yeah. that i need everything to be rosy and glowing it isn't that it's just yeah. i don't feel like yeah. that kind of hate and vitriol needs to be uh, up on 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 that kind of stuff so we do get rid of them and so if you're going to say something nasty anybody that's going to mark something on youtube it's not going to stay there so you might as well just um not bother typing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah. i'm only going to read two words of it and realize it's nasty and go boop goodbye um but yeah it's you're right i'm 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 super sensitive to about some things I can just move on, but um, when someone really is trying to get at you, yeah, I, I don't, I don't spend. There's, there's going to be a, there's going to be a small percentage of people that no matter what you say, uh, that they're going to have nasty comments because they hate their, their mother. Right. And uh, oh, so any, gosh, anything. Yeah. So you're you're a woman, you're a woman, uh, giving information. And so whatever you would say, whether it, whether they agree with it or disagree with it or anything, they, they will unconsciously uh, look for a reason to pick it apart because they're just getting spending their whole lives getting vengeance on their moms. Right. And with you, yeah, and it has nothing to do with me. Probably. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah and with me, their dad. Yeah. yeah. Hi, this is Dr. Paul Meyer of the Meyer Clinics. Our Christian counselors across the country have a goal of helping all those who come to us to become what God has called them to be. If you're in a situation where you're not at peace within yourself or you just feel like there's joy that's missing in your life, we can come alongside to help you obtain peace and joy. This message is sponsored by the Meyer Clinic Foundation, a nonprofit Christian counseling ministry. The number is 1-888-7-CLINIC, 1-888-7-CLINIC. Well, where we so left anyway. off last week, we talked about normal brief grief and regression. And so this week we're bringing yeah. up. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give a, qu a quick definition of right. of those again that that uh, uh, on the, the anniversary of losses or even on holidays, like uh, like my dad didn't die on at Christmas, but, uh, you know, on, on a Christmas, I might feel a temporary a minute of sadness because my dad's not there. And so even though I've dealt with his death and all that, I might miss him for a minute. And that's normal. That's okay. See, but that, that would be an anniversary illness, but it's not really an illness. It's just psychiatry calls it that. But, um, but if you have a significant loss um, that you haven't dealt with, then but like, you know, you like your mate dies and you're in a car wreck and you're both, uh, and you know, the people in the car are badly wounded and, and your mate dies or something. 
well, you you could have post traumatic stress for quite a while after that, you know, where you have flashbacks and and panic attacks and uh, um, uh, nightmares and um, other uh, physical symptoms, sensitivity to sound, mm -hmm. uh, sensitivity to light. Somebody drops something behind you and you jump instead of just normally being a normal amount of, of surprise. And, uh, and that's post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, so you deal, you know, hopefully you get therapy and you deal with it and you get past it. And uh, when we look back on our lives, when you get older, the times that you've experienced the most growth are almost always the times that you had your worst grief. Right. And uh, so it can be a, a growing experience. You don't want, I don't wish trauma on anybody, but when you look back, if you deal with it the right way, you're going to be a stronger person than you would have been if it never happened. And so people will work on it and they'll get past it. But then, uh, you know, let's say uh, the event happened in a, in a, you know, in the month of May, you know, we'll just make up a month. And then, uh, and so it could be that uh, even though you're not having any post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms anymore, that uh, that every May around that time, uh, I, incur I I tell my patients now, you know, expect a little bit of this to come, so that you're not surprised and, and disappointed. And because uh, <clears throat> on the anniversary of that of that event, especially the first few years, there might be some temporary. Um, sadness or anxiety um, or even a nightmare that you don't even know what it's caused by and uh, or, or a few headaches or something that's not that's and, and, and you think oh no it's all coming back no it's not all coming back hmm. it's just that those post-traumatic stress symptoms could occur uh, to a milder extent uh, each year and uh, I, I guess even if you've totally resolved it, you might have a little bit, of, you know, right. some anxiety. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't get get up fully into post traumatic stress or anything. But, but you could have some anxiety and and maybe one nightmare or something, and not the full blown experience. But uh, expect a little bit on the anniversary of your losses, right. and um, uh, and and then if you anticipate it, then oh, okay, here's what's happening. And you see what's happening, then it, it doesn't get a hold of you, and you just get past it. You have a good cry, and you share it with somebody, and you pray about it, and and you move on. And uh, uh, as the years go by, it becomes less. Uh, uh, you, you may not even remember it anymore. But um, uh, that's anniversary illness. Just means on the at that each year at the time uh, at uh, you know. Uh, close to the date when you experienced a really significant loss, it's normal to have what's called anniversary illness where uh, uh, consciously or unconsciously, you may remember it and it may cause you some temporary anxiety or sadness, or you may not remember it and feel a little bit anxious or sad and not know why. Right. And so if you don't know why you're having a sudden wave of sadness when you've been happy for so long then stop and ask yourself, well, you know, is there something that happened a year ago? at this time of year or, or many years ago at this time of year that uh, is causing me to um, have a little unresolved grief showing up or something. Yeah. So I, I can, traumatic stress well. yeah, I can give a, um, a short example of that. Um, I had with that I've worked through because things are very different in my family now. Um, but I took off uh, the day before Thanksgiving a few years ago from um, you know, and, and completely cut out my mother from my life for a couple of years. Uh, it was so stressful, so traumatic. Everything that was going on was so awful uh, for her and for me um, that I just had to get away. And I showed up at a friend's house uh, the night before Thanksgiving. And I don't even know. I mean, we talk, to talk about it with my friend now. She just said, you need to pack a bag and get here now. And I did. And she let me stay there for a few months and um, just heal. And um, it, I, she said, we laugh about now how I was cutting the turkey and I wasn't even on this planet. I was so just in sh full yeah. on shock. And, and the next Thanksgiving was very 
difficult and I had no contact. I was not going to be anywhere near family, but it, I was the weeks leading up to it. I got very depressed. I had to up my uh, medication. I had to take Wellbutrin along with my Prestique just to, cause I, I knew. And did, I was did you know the why? Therapist. Did you know why? Yeah. Oh yeah. I knew why. In that case, I, I okay. knew, I knew why. And I had an excellent therapist that was like, now you may doing what you said you do, which is why you're so amazing. Um, you may yeah. have this come up where you have a stressful time. And then the next year, because I dealt with it the next year, I knew, okay, this could happen. And it was less. And now of course things have completely changed. And now I don't have that really um, at all. Uh, you know, so, but that's just to give you listeners an example of, you know, how that can happen. You're, you're blessed if you have a really good therapist that can forewarn you or friends or family members that you can talk to about these things, but sometimes you don't, and you are literally just sitting there going, what is wrong with me? Why can't I get it together? Why am I, you know, forgetting things or missing things? Or why did I blow up at that person when over something so stupid? I mean, it can be things like that. And those are all things for you to stop and go, oh, what? Could there be something a year ago from about now that, uh, you know, even a few years ago that I, every time this year that I get kind of uh, have these PTSD like symptoms, you know, come up and, you know, it's, it, it serves you very well to examine that. Yeah. I was just thinking right this moment for all of you listening to our, to us right now and our listening family, uh, I hope you not only apply this to you, but, you, but I, I know that, uh, that you are very, uh, from the letters we get and all that. I know you're very kind and caring people about other people and learning this will help you to help a lot of other people too. Yes. So as your friends or your, your kids or whoever, uh, if they go through a temporary, uh, wave of sadness, uh, ask them that question may, may or may not be that kind of thing. It might be something else, but right. ask them, was this a, is this the time of year that you had a, a significant loss in the past? And, and if they say, ah, yeah, 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 it was, yeah, a year ago today that, that, uh, that my best friend, you know, died of, of, uh, COVID or something or whatever. Right. And, and so you're, and then, then they can say, ah, no wonder I'm sad. And so it, then they, they can have a good cry about it and talk about it and they're over it. Whereas it, they could feel sad for a long time and not know why if they don't become aware of it and right. deal with it. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Just remind, yeah. just re, just remember it's normal. It's normal as, as humans to have uh, these kinds of anniversary events for losses that we've had, and yes. um, it's it's very normal. And I, I, and unresolved grief is the other point, and we've really met, you know meld, melded it into our discussion already. Uh, if if you've got unresolved grief. Now, when, when you have a big loss, if you have a big loss and you don't deal with it and just try to suck it up, and men are especially guilty of that. They're taught big boys don't cry, right. you know, and uh, and so women are, I think one reason why uh, women do so much better than men do in life, and they do, they live longer. Women live longer, and um, men that are single um, have 300% more heart attacks, strokes, and uh, suicides than men that are married. So being married does a man a lot of good because they're with somebody that will help them to get in touch with feelings when they don't really know how to or you know, aren't experienced at it. And, uh, and women who are married are 2% better off than women who are single <laughs> from statistically. I, I hated that research, uh, but men are 300% better off. I think that's, that's why the Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. It doesn't. It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible. She that finds a husband finds a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I I, I I don't like to. Sh- I don't share that with my wife because I don't want her to you know realize how how much luckier I. No, I, I guess I do want her to realize how much luckier I am than she is. She but, knows because you're such but, a great husband. Yeah. Yes. But um, but if you have unresolved grief. If you had a big loss and you don't resolve it and you don't have, if get therapy if you need to or or whatever you need to do to get past it and grieve and get angry and go through the stages of grief and all that, then 
it's good. You, you could stay depressed for years. You could spend the rest of your life depressed. But, uh, and if you deal with it partially, you may get over it. And then every year on the anniversary of that, you could go into another deep depression. I know I've had patients that got depressed every year yeah. and, and not even known why, you know, and, and, uh, it's because they had unresolved grief. And it's such a, um, if you, you know, if you don't deal with it, it, it can sneak up on you and, and come out sideways in your life. Um, like a blow up at a grocery store over something or to where, you know, you're given opportunities to work on it by what goes on in your life. And if you don't pay attention, those opportunities get louder and louder, and then they come in in technicolor and, um, you know, uh, they don't necessarily have to go to that level if you can acknowledge it in the beginning, yeah. like at the first time something shows up that you go, Ooh, that was really not like how I normally behave. Let's examine this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kristen, one example of, um, uh, anniversary illnesses in, in, uh, um, I had one patient who was, a uh, 27 uh, year old female professional and had a very normal childhood and, and, uh, was happy almost all the time. And, uh, but for seven years straight, every August, she would get depressed and sometimes even suicidal and not know why. And then, and then she'd get over it and be happy again. And, um, and she finally came in the seventh time it happened in a, in a row. She came in our catalyst program where, uh, people stay for about three weeks and, you know, they get therapy seven hours a day for five days a week. And, and, they, and we resolve almost anything by digging and probing. And if it's genetic and adding medications that they might take lifelong. And, and, uh, so for her, she was there for about three or four or five days. And usually we figure out within the first couple of days, what, what it is that's eating away. on Mark Twain said, it's not what you eat that gives you indigestion. It's what's eating you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we, we dig and we probe and, and we try to figure out what it is that's eating away at them. And, uh, and so I, I told her, I remember telling her, um, that, um, after she was there about a week and we still hadn't figured it out, I said, well, I, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's pray, uh, that God will give you a dream because I, I love dreams as you know, and, and I, and dreams are windows into the soul. And so that he gives you a dream and that somehow from that dream, we figure out what's, uh, what it is that's eaten away at you because your dreams are, they come from your unconscious. And so she said, okay. And we prayed that. And, uh, and the next day, um, I came in to see her and I said, did you have a dream last night? And she said, no, I didn't. And I said, well, I had one about you and which I did. I said, I had one about you. And, um, uh, and, and I said, and I said, that's, that's, I said, it could be because God was talking to me or it could be because I had jalapenos in my Mexican food at the restaurant last night. I said, you know, who, who knows what, it, what, what, why I had that dream. But even though you told me when I first met you a week ago, because I asked everybody, you know, about, have you ever done drugs? Has this ever happened? Has that ever happened? And one question I always ask them is, have you ever had an abortion? And, and, and I said, even though you said you'd never had an abortion uh, in a dream last night, uh, Jesus said, ask her about her abortion. And so, uh, and so I'm, I'm asking you now, have you ever had an abortion again? And I, I'm sorry if I offend you in any way, cause I know you told me you didn't. And she, she looked startled and she said, you know, actually I did have one and, and I, and I just wow. denied it. You know? And I said, well, uh, when did you have it? And he said, seven years ago. And I, and I said, well, what month did you have it? She said, well, it was in August. I said, and she said, but I can't have anything to do with that. She said, I'm pro abortion. It didn't bother me at all. Uh, it can't have anything to do with that. She sort of got angry that, that it came up. I said, well, I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not trying to bring up and cause stir up any trouble or anything, but, but it could be unresolved, uh, issues about that you know either you have you, you might have uh, uh guilt about it or or you may uh wish you had that child you know and uh 
And uh, I said, so uh, uh, do me a, do me a favor tonight um, when you uh, get home, get back to your hotel because she was from out of town. That when you get back to your hotel after you're done getting therapy today, do me a favor and uh, uh, stop and try to guess whether the baby. Because I, I said for one thing, babies. The Proverbs says Solomon, King Solomon said in Proverbs, in uh, I mean in Ecclesiastes um, chapter four, he said that babies that die in the womb are actually lucky as they get to go right to heaven without going through all the hassles of earth first. Now I'm paraphrasing it, but it, it implies that. And I said, so you're, you know, the the baby that you aborted, I believe, is in heaven, and and uh, and is going to is probably an adult already, and you know, because they become, I, who knows if they grow up there or, be, or they're one of them immediately. But I believe that that uh, your baby went straight to heaven, like 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 that verse says, and and uh, and heaven's so great, it's not like your baby's, you know, says, oh, I wish I would have experienced earth first. <laughs> right and uh and 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 yet that child will be waiting for you someday and become your son or your daughter at that time but but as a friend you know and and he's not going to resent you or anything and uh so i want you to uh, and i said no you don't have to believe it the way i do i mean she she was a christian and so she did believe that but uh hadn't thought about that but i said so decide whether try to guess whether it was a boy or a girl and give the baby a name, and uh, and then tonight, write a letter to that baby, and uh, and just tell the baby. Assume the baby's you know probably an adult now, but we don't know. But let's assume it's a baby, it's an adult. But write a letter to that person, and uh, and just tell him or her how you feel about about them. You know whether you look forward to meeting them or whether you're sad you need to get to know them now or just. Whatever comes to your mind. And she said, no problem, I'll, I'll do that. And I said, but she said, I know it can't have anything to do with that. And so that night she uh, wrote the letter and she just, you know, once she was about 10 minutes into it, five minutes into it, she just became aware of her great uh, unresolved uh, guilt feelings and regrets and different things and, and wept and cried and, and uh, came the next day and grieved and said, you know, that really sucked it out of me that that really brought to light things that I had never dealt with. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she, wow. she, she dealt with it and felt, uh, I mean, she was suicidal, you know, before that. And she felt great. A f- you know, a few days later, she felt wonderful that she had uh, resolved it and knows, you know, God doesn't hold any grudges and, and her child doesn't hold any grudges and she needs to not hold any grudges for herself either, you know, and, and, uh, God uh, forgives everything if if it if it is a sin and and God forgives it then uh, and so when she looked back she also remembered that you know what she she did sort of look around um, in grocery stores and places in August she'd look around and uh, wonder what it would be like if she if she saw a five year old two years ago you know what I, I wonder if what my child would look like you know or be like uh, if he had been born and uh, she did have thoughts like that uh, each year. And so it was, but she didn't realize that that's what it was. So she had, she had anniversary illness that was a post-abortion syndrome. And that's actually a lot more common than is uh, um, recognized in the literature because people don't like to write about it. It's not politically correct. Right. So we learned about it when 50 years ago, we learned about it and it was no big deal, you know, to learn about it. But right. now uh, it's not brought up very often. So I mm-hmm. just wanted to share that example. That's one type of anniversary illness. I can't even fathom not having that be, you know, a huge effect on anyone. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Paul. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I'm, I'm done with it. And you know so what? I'm you, I'm gonna leave that yeah. in because I I think it's lovely. I don't see why that would be a problem for my show. Oh, okay. Yeah, you didn't yeah, say I, it's wrong. Yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, of course, yeah. I can't even. I mean, That's I have a, yeah. never, I've never had one myself, but I have friends who have, and you know, they none of them. You You'd know, be all, surprised. 
None you of them have said I'm over it. it. They're all every year. They have tremendous yeah. uh, guilt and you know all kinds of things that come up, and we talk about it yeah. and cry about it and, yeah. and everything. Because of course yeah. you would, regardless of hey, the Christian, circumstance. Yeah, I, I was shocked at uh, how many uh, evangelical, you know, Christian women that that have gone to church all their lives and all. How many of them have had abortions? It's a lot. Yeah. You know, it, it's a lot, and and that that just never told anybody. Uh, maybe it's, it was in college or something. And, right. Um, so anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, thank you so much. This was such a great topic. Perfect for 2020. And I, I want to reiterate to everyone that you could have a lot of these types of things go on next year because this year has been so rough for everyone. So keep that in mind and be so kind to yourself next year and right now. But yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Really and we're putting that, this so. in the can. We, Kristen and I call putting these uh, programs in the can, you know, uh, <laughs> that's a, an old term for, uh, you know, TV shows, they'd put them in the, in a metal can to pull out, you know, and reshow. But uh, for those of you who listen to this uh, in 2030, you know, I, I hope people are, listening to these uh, for many years to come Absolutely. and for no, no matter when you listen to it uh i hope it'll just help you to remember that it's uh, anniversary illness is not a very good term for it but anniversary uh re-emergence of uh some uh emotions is very normal and we all do it and uh um and the extent to which we resolve it I mean is the extent to which it's going to affect us in a negative way but uh, sometimes it's a it's a good thing, you know, having a little bit of sadness because you miss your parent or your child who died or or uh, whatever, you know. Then then um, uh, uh, once a year for for maybe an hour or or so is a good thing, it's, you know. It's a uh, so it can be a good thing, but but if we don't resolve it, it can become a significant thing. So uh, just re- remember it's normal. Uh, watch for it. Encourage your loved ones to watch for it. If one of them experiences sad, unexplained sadness, uh, ask them about: Did something? Did you have a great loss? Uh, you know, a year ago, or, or in, in, in any year in previously on this time of year, uh, that this might be part of what what's uh, grieving you. And um, and it's gonna you're gonna help yourself. You're gonna help a lot of other people by doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to thank you listeners for tuning in to another episode of the Meyer Clinics podcast. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. Tune in next time for another engaging discussion on relevant mental health topics. If you have any questions about Meyer Clinics, please visit our website at MeyerClinics.com. That's M-E-I-E-R clinics.com or call us at 888-7-CLINIC. Don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or any of your favorite podcast apps. And please note that we are a member of and produced by Mental Health News Radio Network, mhnrnetwork.com.